Hello, my name's Jonathan Smith. I'm a local researcher from here in the Black Country in the West Midlands and I'm standing here in Netherton next to the 16 ton faithful replica steel anchor for the SS Titanic. Just a few hundred yards away from where I'm actually standing at the moment are the former works of Noah Hingley and Sons Limited. They were the largest anchor manufacturer in the world. At one time, around about 1900, they could produce around about 1,000 tonnes of steel per week. One of their biggest achievements uh, for the company was the production of large-scale anchors, such as the one that we have here. Uh, they manufactured anchors for various shipping companies all around the world. This particular anchor that we're standing next to, this is the Hulls 1910 anchor. And the, the anchor that you see here, these were exactly made for Titanic and her sisters, the Olympic and the Britannic. The anchors didn't come as a complete whole kit. You've got various parts of the anchor that was fabricated, such as this section known as the shank. Behind me, we have the head of the anchor. Then we have the shackle, which is at the end. This replica, which was created in 2010 for a major television series, uh, was created purely to show that such an item of this scale could be manufactured today using similar techniques to how they were manufactured back in 1911, 1910, exactly 100 years ago. And it was a huge achievement that um, even back then in 1911 that something of this scale could be produced. And this anchor just replicates and shows just how big these ships were. In case you hadn't noticed, you could say it was Titanic in size just for the ship Titanic. The original anchor is still down there today, two and a half miles down on the bottom of the North Atlantic, still in the best condition that it's ever been because it was made with Hingley's best steel. We're at the location at the moment. This is um, the former works of Lloyd's Proving House. Now in Hingley's are just a matter of yards away and all their equipment such as anchors and chains that were produced were bought straight across from the Hingley works over the road and right here to Lloyd's Proving House. There are a number of photographs taken here on this location of Titanic's anchor sitting on the 20 ton dray with various horses attached to the front of the dray. This particular photograph shows you the dray with eight of the original WA Re horses. And we have here, we have the main offices of Lloyd's Proving House and to the left are the two main factory parts of the complex. These factory parts are where the parts of the anchor and the anchor chains were tested. Within the complex there were a series of pits where workers would, would be standing within the pit so the anchor chains would be more or less at, at a shoulder height. The anchor chains will be passed through a series of runners and through a testing machine and a certain amount of tonnage will be applied to the anchor chains and as the tonnage is applied the anchor chains are put under pressure then once released each link is then tested and checked and stamp marked and it's approved. The anchors themselves were assembled right here on this location. Each anchor was then lifted to a certain height. For example Titanic 16 ton anchor the anchor was lifted to 15 feet off the ground. On the ground there was a, a solid concrete base with a four inch steel topped topping and the anchor will be dropped onto the onto the plate. Once it was dropped it was then checked. Any imperfections within the anchor, any cracks, then the anchor would need to be reheated and it would need to be shot blasted with pig iron to strengthen it back up and if it was perfect the anchor would then be approved and certificated. Once approved the anchor is assembled then painted and what English decided to have done to the anchor was they would have the company name painted on the shank of the anchor. This was due to the White Star Line who for whatever reasons they would not advertise Hingley's so Hingley's decided to take it on their own back to advertise their own companies for supplying these huge anchors. The historic photograph of Titanic's anchor on the dray if you can actually see there are eight horses there. Because of a steep incline of a hill Hingley's just to opposite us, decided to supply six of their own horses. So it brought the horse total to 14. From two miles away at Dudley Railway Station, London and North Western Railways bought over six of their own horses. And so the six horses from London and North Western Railways were added to the front of the procession. Once done, checks were made, and just after midday, 
on the 29th of April 1911, the horses, all 20 of them, with the dray, with the 16 tonne Titanic anchor, started their two mile journey from here, through Netherton, into Dudley, and to Dudley Railway Station. And that was done for each of the anchors. Titanic had a total of five anchors. There was one main centre anchor, which weighed 16 tonnes. There were two bow anchors, which weighed just over seven and a half tonnes. And there were two smaller anchors called keg anchors, which sat on the bow and the stern of Titanic, each weighing around about half tonnes each. And each of those, with all the anchor chains, were sent over a period of days via road to the railway station at Dudley. They wanted 20 horses to pull a replica anchor uh, for the Titanic. The original one was uh, 15 tonnes. I think when they recast this one, it was 16 and a half tonnes. And with the wagon, it became 19 and a half tonnes. And we had to put a 20 horse hitch on and replicate the whole thing down to the harness, everything uh, as best as we could. Um, to do this, I sought the help of uh, several people whose horses I had trained over the last few years and I think bar two horses in the hitch I, I had trained the whole lot. The transportation of this replica anchor back in 2010 for the TV series uh, we started this off back down at Dudley just two miles behind me and um, because today our streets are lined with tarmac Back then, 100 years ago, the streets were lined with cobbles. The horses, which were 20 of them at the time, could get better grip upon the surface of the roads compared to today, where they would be slipping. Because it was reversed, the horses would start to pull the anchor on a modern day dray from Dudley back to here and Netherton to have this huge replica put out here on this green. It was a very challenging job for me. It was the sheer weight. I, I hesitate to say this, but I rather think there could have been no one else pulling as much weight with 20 horses. 20 horses, 19 and a half tonne, I think it's almost unheard of in the last hundred years. Our real problem was trying to get the horses to grip on the tarmac. Uh, I think we can quite safely say that on the level and a slight hill we had absolutely no trouble at all. The horses worked perfectly, we had no problems whatsoever. In these instances one's not always expecting everything to go perfectly. If it was all easy, anybody would do it at any time. We had a tractor on the back for a break, but it was very much more challenging with a modern tarmac surface. Uh, but all in all, I don't think anybody that saw it from beginning to end, uh, from putting the horses on in their various uh, numbers, 10 and then 12, and putting them all together, I think every single person would agree it was very successful. There were no nasty moments. Uh, everybody worked well together and, and I was very proud of what we did.